Oh God. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, could be a bit of a rough stream today. I've been kind of under the weather, maybe COVID. Uh, I haven't been tested, so I don't want to say for sure, but it is possible. Um, had a cough, wasn't feeling great, face rash, eye swollen. Um, could be a lot of factors, but anyways, I'm going to try to stream. I haven't really been feeling like up to streaming um, that I have to like cut out early or something. So I'm going to give it a try, but um, obviously uh, I've looked better. So um, anyways, be be nice um, and we'll, we'll play as long as we can. Uh, Oakland Park is eight minutes to the first. So we've got the plot pulled up for this race. Right now, current favorite is the eight. Um, a big favorite in here at nine to five, just kind of given the field and the way that this horse looks just according to the plot. I mean, if you're looking at the number eight on the plot, really no edge. Oh, fuck. I forgot. I should tweet this out, tweet out this like, hold on real quick. And we'll get back to this uh, handicapping. Forgot to do that. Hmm. All right. All right. So getting back, getting back to the, to the board here. So getting back, getting back to the, to the, okay. All right. Now it's set. Um, getting back to the board. The ace currently the favorite two to one. And again, looking at the plot does not really have any edge in this field, just as far as the position, um, on standard current form, kind of that hovering square in quad four, quad two, trying to get an eye kind of looking at the, um, track feet at the same time, just to kind of see some visuals there. Um, and then on surface distance, a circle in quadrant two looks like pretty much every Asmussen horse, um, that comes out. So, um, just kind of the quick first three running lines, um, fits in terms of speed figures. I'm going to pull up the grid just so we can get a better, kind of better view of what's going on here. All right. Um, so yeah, kind of starting from the, from the bottom up, I mean, started, started with Lucas. So, um, this is a barn change with Asmussen and, I guess let's let's kind of focus more on the recency in this case with the bar change and the service change and all that. So this being the third start of the form cycle, um, came back off the break um, on November 26th. Churchill Downs was a muddy track at this level, a B minus, so pretty average. Last time out, slug, trouble, start, move. A uh, horse that kind of just seems like has that pattern of breaking slow. So that is a liability, especially when you're talking about 
um, two to one in this race. So let's see if there's there's any possible alternatives in here. Um, I'm going to just kind of go through the field one by one because we've only got five minutes, so I can go quick. Um, the number one, this is going to be a first start in for a tag. It's been entered twice at this level. Uh, 67's been a top speed figure. It's probably a little bit soft, um, so maybe a little bit below at this point. We've got some form on the number two Amazing Rocket going back to, um, this is going to be what, November 11th at Churchill Downs. Uh, last two starts, though, not much, and they're going to stretch this horse out. So looks a little bit desperate with that move, 19-1. to 1. Not going to be too critical um, with that. A lot of chances on the threes, currently 8-1. to one. Um, Second start of the form cycle, kind of has those double layoff lines. Again, another one. It's been at this level, mostly sprinting, um, no real edge. The number four, this is, uh, the number four looks interesting. Okay, currently your second choice, but has a little bit more upside. Second time at this level, has some speed figures that stack up on par. Um, only the second time in at the maiden claiming level. That was a C-plus race um, back on... December 11th it was a pace setting winner so finishing seventh not bad I think that's what the common race with the eight um yeah common race with the eight so finished in front of that horse um and then has some back numbers uh the five looks okay as well um as far as a number seems like there's an improvement in terms of the optics figures um coming into this race a couple c pluses but those are at slightly higher higher level using the optics figure range so it could kind of make a little bit of a case there looks looks okay on the plot the six looks looks kind of excellent on the plot a uh, race that looks key um last out stocked by open lanes winner feels based out behind at the wire um not a bad second place finish i don't know why this horse is currently uh nine to one that seems Seems kind of overlay-ish. Maybe people just don't trust that last race because um, it was a muddy track, but that horse looks fine to me. Um, the seven looks like this drop should have happened forever ago. Does have a couple races back here in 2021 at the maiden claiming level, a couple B minuses, um, but those are all sprinting. Um, just kind of a, a tough one to make a case for on the win end. I mean, crazier things have happened, but you're kind of playing for chaos. Again, number eight, I think this horse just kind of favored by default. People feeling a little bit safer, just given the connections. Oh, maybe today's the day he's going to break great or, you know, whatever. Even if he breaks slow, um, you know, maybe it's just better than, than these horses. Um, but seems like those other horses we mentioned so far, four and five, um, alternatives. And then, uh, the nine, I mean, just says uh, nine to two, not the not the greatest value there, but um, a horse that's lightly raced. Uh, this is a second start. This is pulling in old data from from another horse, so just kind of ignore it. Um, but a second start, wheeling back in twelve days at the maiden special weight level, so getting class relief and ran a seventy one. So um, it doesn't have to improve much to um, to improve and compete in this spot. So um, yeah. I, not not sold uh not sold on that horse um as the favorite in here is that kind of harsh on the on the two i could see this horse underneath maybe yeah i think maybe the first time around it was a little bit harsh maybe going quick no i didn't think that race was bad what happened here that was sprinting oh just because they're going to stretch out Yeah, this race was good. This horse is not worth is not the craziest horse in the in the field at a big price, twenty four to one. Um, we got a couple of people that jumped on. Um, I was mentioning earlier, I don't think there was anybody kind of on on the feed yet, but been a little bit under the weather. Maybe maybe COVID, as you can see, my face is still kind of like red, has a rash, my eyes kind of swollen. Um, so this is pretty uh pretty rough. I'm kind of keyword ouchy today, but I'm going to try to stream for as long as I can. I haven't really felt up to it the last couple of days. And I don't want to be like on here, like coughing and <laughs> all that stuff. Like no one wants to see that. So we'll, we'll try to stream today and see, see how it goes. All right. Horses are going into the gate right now. Um, if Vic ever replies to me on Twitter, I'll, I'll discuss that. 
discuss that on stream. And welcome, welcome everybody into the chat. Um, chat's open, questions. Um, we'll do mostly Oakland Park and Fairgrounds, kind of go through more kind of slow, slower kind of handicapping style um, today rather than jumping around all, all crazy. Um, all right. Well, let me pull this up just so you can see. Um, kind of see why the eight being a little bit vulnerable in this spot doesn't really have any strong edge. Didn't break that bed today. Still a, off a little bit slow. Um, seven's, seven looked like he's going to go out front and then drop way the heck back. Uh, three is up there. Same with one contesting the pace. Uh, two. That long shot with a little bit of a look, stalking right off that pair. Ford was outside, six sitting inside, five a little bit of traffic, two just went up to duel with the three, one dropped back along the inside, eight's covered up mid-pack, eyes wide, two just cleared, just a little bit rank. This horse is just kind of running off from the field, so there's no turning back on the two now. They got to go. Um, nine is caught wide, seven who looked like they were going to break on top, took back. But pretty quick, tick under 24 for that opening quarter, 47 change for the half. Um, also get a feel kind of how the, how the track's been playing um, because we did have that weather. Uh, eight's under a little bit of a ride right now and starting to, starting to lose some ground. So if you back that horse at a short price, it could be a little sketch. Well, this race is going to start to slow late. Let me start and run. Um, two is backing up three and four just took the lead looks like the four is going to be the actual favorite four's got his head in front three's trying to battle back eight's trying to grind same with one got a lot of work to do i was in the six up there that horse is a dud dud city uh looks like it's going to be four three battling four show looks like it's going to go to the eight four three eight Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. All right. Just trying to get an idea for the timing. All right. Um, probably going to be Oakland two will be the next race because thirty three to the first at the fairgrounds. H20. Woohoo! Did you play the four? The four was uh the four went off as a favorite. The four was a was a better favorite than the eight. I guess maybe those uh sexy uh Steve Asmussen connections on the eight. Alright, so let's move on to the second race. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a, this looks like a, a fun plot. Um, so it's two to one, six to one, two to one, and then that seven ended up running on um, sixty-two to one for underneath. So let's see. Um, the seven is probably going to be a, the favorite in this race, listed as the morning line favorite. And typically, you know, when that happens with Diodora horses, um, they kind of stay that way. But just as far as the plot, I'm going to kind of start here before we get into um, get into the grid. So just looking at the plot fit is a green plot fit. So typically when you see the green plot fit, the horses line up on that diagonal. I don't know if my mouse will show up, but that diagonal that goes from the top to the bottom, you can kind of see the horses more or less line up when they start going all over the place and it becomes a little bit chaotic. That's when you start getting yellow and red. But they, they pretty much line, and then there's not many ch changes from standard. Standard is the current form to surface distance, which is pretty self-explanatory in this case, um, a dirt sprint. So that's the plot fit. And then as far as contention, contention is um, the horses that are kind of clustered in this quadrant one, okay? 
I shouldn't, uh, just in general, contention is the, the amount of forces that are in quadrant one. And in this case, we have the fire contention because the 1A is there, the 3, the 4, the 6, the, the 7, and the 8. So we have um, the bulk of the field is in that quadrant one. So horses that want to be on or near the lead. Now, there's a little bit of change um, just in terms of the optics RPM, which is the run style match of how horses want to run. A lot of times when you see that fire contention, you'll have a lot of horses that are E, right, front running types or, or EP, uh, front running kind of presser types. Um, and there's a few, but there's more kind of presser, presser closer types. So we'll have to do a little bit of a deeper dive there. And then that's also consistent just as far as the speed rate. So this is one of those scenarios where you have you have that higher contention, but that doesn't necessarily mean these are horses that are going to be going super fast. So even you know for the six furlongs, we could see closer to like a, a twenty three opening quarter, right? Which you know that could see a horse who is kind of the best of the speed, um, a square in quadrant one, still have enough kick late, even though they took pressure. Okay, um, so that's the plot fit, the contention, the speed rate. Um, and we'll kind of get into the, uh, get into the horse, the horse by horse. And in just a second, be able to grab the board. So I'm going to filter maybe a little bit bigger filter than normal. Let's go 180 and see what happens. Um, all right. So we'll start Lady Magna on the inside, um, who's part of the coupled entry with the 1 and the 1A. One um, it looks like the 1A is probably, I mean, not that it matters, but just when we're doing the horse by horse. Um, as far as Lady Magna, she's coming out of the Hawthorne meet. It's had a little bit of a freshening, 34 days. Then, And that's noted as a horse that has run back on short rest. So coming off a little bit of a break could could need the race. And in terms of the plot, um, you know, no real pace advantage in quarter of four. Um, the optics figure range, 75 to 83. So it does have a couple races that, that sit in range. Um, and those efforts kind of seem consistent for this level. Um, again, just might need a race in terms of the form. Number two, Fable's Love Affair. Um, has the, has the higher Canterbury numbers, second off, um, a slightly higher level last out, 85, 77 in that starter allowance, probably benefit from that race coming off a little bit over a three month break. Um, so could improve, but probably wanted to see a little bit more from this one. Currently 12 to 1. Um, and by a little bit more, the C grade is kind of like an, an overall um an overall performance of of the horse, you know, just kind of that kind of separates from the note a little bit. Um, so that you just sort of know where that horse belongs. Uh Josh Allen, appreciate the detail and the race relationship between the fire race rating and the speed rating. Yeah, it's really important because you you can see that a lot even on um or see people make mistakes with that a lot, just kind of looking at the past performances, right? They'll look in, they'll see the running lines, and it's like, oh, there's all these horses that are, you know, ones, ones in the running lines, one, 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 one. The pace is going to be super fast. It's going to set up for a closer. And, you know, not necessarily the case. Like, it's typically not the case when it's ones, but whatever. Then we're going to use that for example. Let's say those were like route horses, and now they're cutting back to a sprint. Um, so it is important to understand. And then the opposite, sometimes it'll look like a race that there's not a lot of E-types, but there are still horses that are running fast early, maybe you have class droppers or, you know, for whatever reason. And the pace can be fast and still set up kind of for a closer, even though there's not a lot of E-types. So it's important to understand understand that relationship between the two and to um, kind of assess um, individually when, when it applies. Um, all right. So I think that's moving on from the two, just kind of see, I thought the two looked okay on the plot, but that could have been off of, let me get a bigger sample here.
Um, I mean, Speed Figure Wise does have this one race here, which is a sloppy race, but that race kind of looks like an outlier, that 89, because I'm using the, now I'm using the races in 360 days. So this is a pretty, you know, a large enough sample that when you have one number that kind of pokes out. So generally speaking, probably a horse that's a little bit more on the lower end of range. So while this horse hasn't moved forward, uh, maybe it's still a race out, kind of have to see where this horse stacks up on the circuit. The three arrow spear currently thirty three to one, so one of the longer, the longer priced horses. Um, looks like one that has some some early speed, so part of that fire contention. Um, has some numbers here. Tough to see where they translate. The last two races there was really not much, um, and then also this rush keyword. If you're not familiar with optics or, you know, just still kind of kind of learning, what rush means is that the horse was actually a slog, but they they still sent for the lead. So the horse broke slow and they, you know, rushed up to get the lead. So keeping that in mind, this isn't a horse that necessarily gets out of the gate well and shows speed. So they're going to have to they're going to have to use does kind of look like a, a long shot based on that current form. And certainly the lack of finish, you know, is is represented by the circle. As far as the four credit enhancement is coming off a B effort, even though it's a lower speed figure, kind of a lower race par, but still um, got the win. The extended comment said was forced into a duel from the rail early, inside out finishing in a drive and a photo for the win. So we had a little bit of a setup um, in that race. Um, does have a barn change coming into this race. Some numbers on par. Let's see. So the four. Um, currently five to one, kind of a, a mixed read would probably, uh, still might be a little bit short. Let's see some of these others. Um, the five is coming off a long layoff optics figures are well below range. Um, and that was, that was a five-year-old. So, you know, if it was like a three-year-old, maybe you're like, well, we can project, you know, five to 10 points or whatever, but at this point, probably not. Um, this is a horse that, in my opinion, would probably be the longest shot in the race. That quadrant four, but again, has the lower speed rate, so it's probably going to have a, a lot of work to do from off the pace. And again, it's just kind of slow, kind of on the slower side. All right, the six. Six looks interesting. Uh, three to one. Looks okay on the plot. I mean, not great being a circle in there, but not bad considering. Oh, this is the barn that um, I think is heating up, the Aiden Green barn. So that's a positive. Um, but we'll go back. We'll start this form cycle here. Coming off the layoff on November 13th. A starter allowance race. A higher optics figure range. Earn an 80. At 80 being close to the to the higher end of the par. A B minus. So that's good. At a higher level. <coughs> God, this is going to happen a lot. Um, December 3rd ran here at Oakland Park. Um, was claimed out of that race. Ran a B minus. And then this is when, uh, when I say the barn is starting to heat up, a lot of these horses for this barn just didn't run the first time around. So I'm not necessarily holding this race against this horse that much, especially, you know, they, they claim for 10,000, protected at the starter allowance, ran back in 16 days, was wide, no keep, no lead, um, getting a rider change. This horse looks insanely live in this spot. Um, and currently, currently the second choice, it's the morning line. Morning line is five to one, so uh, I'm gonna have to look at the pools, but maybe maybe there'll be a little bit of drift there. That horse looks super light. All right, uh, the seven uh, came off the long layoff last March. Um, was running at the restricted N3L uh, thirty thousand uh, B plus regress. Certainly did regress. Um, they ran the horse long, just kind of went went off form. Um, not the greatest ride here, but all things considered, uh, came off the layoff against the flow, save massive drop. Looks like, uh, I don't know if they claimed or private purchase. Um, but either way. Yeah. So, so massive drop. I don't like the double layoff lines. I don't like, there's a lot I don't like here. The only reason this horse is being bet is because of the connections. Um, 
I shouldn't say only now that I look at her form. She she certainly has races that that can win. But running back to a 74 uh, isn't going to cut it. Um, she's going to have to run one of her better races, which can be a little bit unpredictable. Nancy has her on top. She goes 7-4. What if I'm going to catch this in time? Ooh. So, the 1A maybe flipped or something? From the Will Pace 6 won't be a second choice? Okay. In the seven being bet for the connections or more than so for the hay and oats trainer yeah i mean that's why it's like she can she can certainly win there's the drop there's the connections but the double layoff lines i mean the drop is concerning it's not like she's young she's seven-year-old mare she's in and out of form she's kind of i don't want to say necessarily a win and run out type in this field um but you know, maybe that's just her presence in there will create some value for the six, just as an alternative. I want to see what Nancy what Nancy says on the six. She goes four is her second choice. Seven, four, six. Yeah, so it's pretty pretty obvious on the six that they kind of stiffed that horse last time out. Um, and I guess it's pretty obvious on the standard PPs. All right, the eight, um, currently 11 to one, has some speed, part of that early mix. Could probably take a step forward as well. This horse isn't that bad. Second off, improved here. Um, 15 point improvement. I mean, 15 point improvement would be right in the mix. Has a good looking plot. 11 to 1. Hmm. Let's see if the. They had the front wraps on this horse last time. They take them off. 6 8. 8's getting used regardless. 
that's just too good, too good of a number on a horse that has upside second off. Wraps off is a is a bonus. A first to quit, finish in a blanket for show is a best of the speed winner. The top two finish clear clear of the rest. Um, yeah, I, I like this one. Not bad. Oh, and then there is one more. This is the horse that flipped. So, I don't know. That's probably a little bit of a negative. Um, third of the form cycle. Two most recent numbers are way too soft. This horse needs needs to turn around. Um, first off, the claim. Uh, John Ortiz had this horse before. It's a good barn, so a barn that's been and a barn that's been winning this meet. So it's not like they weren't trying in those races. And then this is another case too, where on November seventeenth she came off came off the bench, uh, ran for the twenty five thousand dollar tag, which is kind of the level this horse was at prior to that that break. Um, a break here and you know you could argue as a prep she broke slow so they drop in class this is the race where the horse should have really improved you know second off getting the class relief coming back 16 days and didn't really so that's kind of negative now the horse flipped over in the paddock not great let's go back to the plot okay the horses are on the track right now the one walked by the three Three wearing front wraps, always wears front wraps. Six wraps are still off. This is good. Seven looks fine. Front wraps are off on the eight. Unless they're really dark. I think they're off, though. It's good. Good news. Good news for, for, for our eight folks out there. Ooh, that's such a positive. All right. Eight, six, 63 right now. It's like a, looks like a race to, to play around in. What do you guys think in this race? No, there's a few people in there in the chat. No seven anywhere on the tickets. Oh, they scratched the one A. One A is out. Oakland. Oh, I can't. I don't want to play it. I definitely don't want to play. I definitely don't want to play music because music is like instant, instant algorithm grabber, and I'll get clapped like with the quickness. But you can let me know what they're playing. Like the six. There's a six on the track. Yeah, I think I think the six is live. I think the eight is really live too. All right, well, I'm doing that. Let's 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 do a quick cap. Because we got a full field. Maybe there's some maybe there's some double opportunities here. Let's do that. Looks like the seven. Seven one, 
seven one nine three eleven are gonna be favored. Seven one. Ooh, the one. Okay, the one looks pretty live for a first time starter in race number three. Um. Same with five. Holy shit. Am I on the wrong race? One and five look really high first time starters. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, just quick handicap. I mean, the 11 I could get to because that's a class drop. The 10 a little bit. The 7, the 8. Too many tries. They could win, but same thing with the 3 plus the layoffs. Yeah, no thanks. Um... Okay, so one, one, five, and eleven. No, uh, ten. Okay, ten. Seven's gonna be a big favorite in there. Let's go. Let's go. All right, going in the gate. Forty two for the six eight combo. Mm. Sorry, let's get the plot. Pretty much good start for all. Five dropping back as expected. We do have that contention up front. The three, four, one, seven, eight tracking that pair. Six stalking right there. One starting to back up, which is kind of as expected, right? The one A is not in the mix. Seven's getting a great trip. We're gonna need some. We're gonna need some run because this horse. This horse is getting just a great trip. Eight's giving up ground. Six is live. Six is running. Eight, not so much. Might have too much to do. Three's dropping back. Come on, six. My last hope. Forty-six. Come on, six. Beat the seven perfect trip horse. Not gonna happen. Oh well. That's how it goes. Seven, seven, one, four, six faded. Um, 
but kind of as the plot kind of projected a little bit on there. There was contention, but a softer pace. Hey, and Oats guy. I mean, I mean, yeah, but I mean, that horse fit as, as it was. I don't necessarily think that they moved that horse up. I'll tell you, the, the perfect trip. That race was kind of over pretty early. Um, disappointing run for the eight. I mean, especially last time, like, showing speed. Like, come on, Martin Garcia, what the hell? Um, well, at least they've kind of handicapped race three already, so that's that. You can go to the fairgrounds with five minutes. Um, uh, missed what Joe had to say. All right, big favorite in here. Oh, God, this is gross. Um... There's four horses in here, technically, right? Because there's an entry. Um, the one, the ones are two to one. The three is two to one. The four is two to one. The six is three to one. This is the this is dumb. I mean, we can handicap it for fun, but if you guys bet this race, you're all going to jail. Trying to decide on the one, like which, what's who they're who they're betting. I mean, the one, the one should have a better trip today. Last time out was up, up close and wide to a fast pace. Um, this could be lone. I don't know why the three is such a short. I mean, I guess yeah, no. So I don't, I don't see that much of an improvement on the three because she's older. I mean, the four would be the value, I guess. <laughs> we got to go from this race. Um, six. It's like a stretch last time. I guess. This is a good race right here. Way down here. Seven mile. This horse wants to go longer. Let's see if some of these, um, some of those first time starters are taking, they took money. Yeah, the one, the one opens up at four to one. The seven is opens up as the favorite as expected, but three to one. So the, the one's certainly live. Um, the five opens up at 13. That was at other first time starters. Keep, keep an eye on that one. Um, 10 is nine to two. And then the 11. Um, so pretty much on the morning line at that point. Let's see.
That's actually just do I can do notes for the fairgrounds race. What do you guys think about uh, Santa Anita? Can't, we're going to get a carryover into tomorrow, or is someone going to get cute? I think it has to carry over into tomorrow, just based on the sequence of today. I'm going to put something up on, on uh, Patreon tomorrow, as far as um, for the Santa Anita pick six. I'm not going to put out a ticket, because... You guys know how it works, but um, I'll kind of, I'll, I'll structure, I'll do the analysis in a way of sort of like how I'm looking at each leg, you know, as far as like single spread, um, some ideas of like how other people are going to play it, certain legs that, uh, you know, try, try to zig and zag stuff. So I'll, I'll do it that way instead of like putting out a ticket, right? Because everybody has different budgets. You might look at the analysis and say, I disagree, which is great, um, and go a different direction. So too many people will try to get the pick six today and likely too difficult to scoop uh, with Pratt and Johnny B. Yeah, yeah, I, Mike, I, I agree. I think people will, they're so like that recency bias, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the guy. And of course it's a guy. So I'm going to be the guy. That's gonna like I want I want the news story. Um yeah. I know, and then as far as like Pratt and Johnny B, it's funny that like the the racing office like posted that like it was a good thing. You're like, yeah, that's like kind of not good actually. It's kind of bad. That's why the jockey colony will have like two good jockeys and like everyone else. Everyone else and Mario Gutierrez because he's like the the one rider in Southern California that has a, a consistent client. I'm doing fairgrounds notes right now. Race seems kind of weak. I think Fairgrounds is going to be better off back to four days. You know what I mean? They can do better than this. All right. Enough of that. What's up, Ocon? Let's hear some analysis. Once that comes up.
What do you guys think? Do you think Vic is too busy to not tweet me back? He probably hasn't seen it, right? He's so busy. Maybe maybe Vic forgot about his prior picks. Happens. No, 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 no. Not not this case. Not this case. So I mean, I rarely, I rarely listen to like the pre thing. But I was like doing something, and I'm like, I'll just have it on. I'll have it on the background. Plus, I wrote up the eighth and ninth race, um, and I'm interested in how other people look at it. Right. So he starts off like with a mo well he earlier earlier while doing the analysis I don't know when it was let's just pretend like race four he mentioned race eight and he's like there's a horse I love in race eight okay so get to race eight opens like with this monologue of like I don't know what I'm not gonna say it word for word but like the best races have like three elements he did say three elements. He's like, vulnerable favorite, gets the right trip. Fuck, what was the third? I forget. There's a third. Vulnerable favorite, gets the right trip, something else. But he's doing it like dramatic, like dramatic tone, like real like slow. Like The first is this. I think that's maybe why I lost my interest. So, like, he's building it up. And this race has a horse, a horse I love. Another long, dramatic pause. Number six, knee deep in snow. Did this, like, describe the trip. And so far, oh, so far I don't disagree with any of this stuff. Like, there's, I think that horse fits for the reason that he mentioned. Then he goes on to talk about CZ Rocket. Maybe, did he go into detail of why? Maybe a little bit as far as, like, why the horse is a vulnerable favorite. Um, but, he's, but he specifically said multiple times that CZ Rocket was a vulnerable favorite. Made made that point. And his picks were up, and he, he had, you know, six, who's the knee-deep in snow, and then he had one and seven and something. Um, so, you know, which is fine, whatever. And then... They do race nine, and then at the end they do they like put up the graphic which has like their four horses for the show parlay. Nancy has her four, Vic has his four, and he has CZ Rocket in that race. And even Nancy goes, "You have CZ Rocket in that race." Like, like she like she says like she's the way that she's saying it is like, is that a mistake? Because be I I heard I heard how you analyze that race like. Do we have an oops? And he's like, no, no, no. That's, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of gave some weird reason. Like, I think I think he's, you know, to hit, to hit the board or something like that. But it was, like, enough to where, like, Nancy was even like, I think, I think, you know, this, an error. So it was, like, it was completely calculated. Like, it, there could have been a time for her to be like, oh, no. And specifically so it just doesn't make it doesn't make any sense oh and he did the other thing he did say while he was doing that race eight is he said 
I'm going to make a big bet on knee deep in snow, which is fine. Like I, you know, bet horses. That's cool. I'm into it. But, and I don't think he said it. I don't think he didn't put that horse. Like, I don't think it's nefarious. Like, let me be clear on that. I don't think it's nefarious that he doesn't, he didn't pick that horse as the show parlay because it's going to like hurt his price. I don't think he did it that way, but he, but just to make the case, like he likes that horse enough. He even said, I don't like this horse. I love this horse enough that he said, I love this horse. I'm going to make a big bet on it. It has my three factors, only two of which I can remember. And then gave it a different horse to show. But the thing is, if you love that horse, let's say, oh, I picked that horse to win. Well, you guys know how it works. Like the horse that wins also pays to show. Even if you don't bet that horse to show, it still pays to show. So Knee Deep in Snow is going to be a bigger price than CZ Rocket. Even if it's not that much in the show pool, it's still going to be a difference, you know, of cents, maybe a dollar. I don't know. But it, I don't know. It just didn't, didn't make, it didn't make any sense. So we'll see. No reply. No reply yet. If anybody has a tape, that would be interesting, but, but I, I mean, I, I love, I love your kindness that he forgot about his prior picks, but not in this case. Okay. Oh, Nancy's going here. Seven, seven, ten, seven, ten, nine, eight. Okay. The seven we know as that favorite. Oh, I don't like the recent layoff lines. I don't like the fact that this horse has been at this level. Yeah, there's a couple Bs back here, but that was last year. Then lost form, had these recent layoff lines. I mean, this horse could win, right? Like, we saw that the seven win in the last race. That was like a, a meh horse. Um, but I don't know. It's not crazy. Uh, the 10... I thought the 10 was, the 10 was logical. Hi, Frosty. Hi. I need two hands to do the computer. Um, sorry, you guys. Frost isn't letting me. I can't get there. Oh, no, I lost the mouse. All right, I'm back. All right, on a shoestring. I don't mind this horse. Um, again, it's, a, it's kind of on the slower side, too. Let's be honest. Um, five to one. Uh, let's see, nine. Nine has these faster races, kind of the same thing between the nine and the seven. Um, has some races at the level. This horse I like more. I, I prefer the nine, and especially in terms of price. I mean, 11, I like this horse quite a bit. Let's not go crazy. Let's not go like to love, but... 11 to 1 to 2 to 1, essentially, this is the same horse. Hi. B B Bob Jay Z. Hi, Emily. Hi. Um, I could make just as much of a case for the 9 as the 7. Who else? The 8? Half Scout is slow. Slow, slow ass horse. Uh, the drop is probably good. They drop last time, certainly needs that. But this is actually almost like an up in class for this horse. But 15 to 1, so I'm not gonna be not gonna be too mean on that one. The eleven, the eleven I think um could show a little bit more race at a higher level on debut. I guess she she is uh Bebop Jazz. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> This is why this is why I'm a big fan that they gave horses numbers over names. That is like probably one after creating horse racing and the pure parimutuel system, giving horses numbers rather than names was was smart. Um, yeah, so we could see a move forward coming back in two weeks off off the debut. Um, and then those two first time starters. The one now, the one we can see. Um, the one is obviously live in here, right? Um, was entered back on December tenth at the special weight level. They scratched. Uh, was entered for forty. They scratched. They're going to run for twenty. She's probably pretty well meant in this spot. Um, I guess that's what I was going to say. Between the the one and the eleven, uh, they're both facing older. 
So that's something to keep in mind. The five is that other first-time starter who has just been on the drift, took some money in the doubles, um, opened at maybe 13 or so, has kind of been steadily climbing as 20. The one the one looks good. But she's uh, a four-year-old. I mean, starting later and later isn't great, but... Uh. I mean, going back to like the the seven nine, they're like the same on the plot. So two to one, ten to one. The eight's getting ignored. Nine to two morning line currently thirteen. If I have to select one paddock person, which person do you think is the best? Maggie Wolfendale? I think Maggie's good. You know, I haven't I haven't been watching enough lately to really to really say who I think is the best because I, I'm probably leaving somebody out, but um yeah, I think I think Maggie I think Maggie's good. Um Yeah, I mean I think sometimes it's, and this isn't an attack on anybody personally, but sometimes it's, there's not, there's not really anything to say, um, and it can be kind of forced, you know, um, and people are looking for stuff that's like, like, I watched that post parade, and it's like, someone was like, hey, you have to say something about this, it's gonna not, it's gonna be kind of, um, uh, not garbage, but, like, there's really not much to say. Like, they all came out on the track. They look like horses. Um, some brown, maybe a gray. You know, first-time starters, got blinkers on. They're, you know, yeah, why Why do you ask what, uh, I mean, I think, I think in terms of the paddock, you really want to be looking for, for changes. Right, like we saw in that other race, the the wraps coming off, even though the horse still ran like shit, it's still you you know something you want to pay attention to. Um, sometimes there's horses that just it's so hard to describe because it's it is an individual thing in that moment, but a horse will just like come out on the track and you just kind of know you're like, whoa, this this horse just stands out, right? Like, you know, whatever. And then sometimes there's there's certain horses like, uh. Bill Mott and Steve Asmussen, like, their horses, their horses look good to me. Like, that's, you know, I, I just think they turn out whatever they do. Uh, Michael Matt's kind of the same way. You know, turns out John Sheriff's horse is kind of the same thing. I don't know what. But, you know, they're they're always going to be. So I kind of have to be like, okay, that's, you know, that's how they always look. That's not necessarily a change. That's not necessarily, wow, that horse looks good. That horse looks consistent for how those horses look even though that tends to be a preference of mine it's kind of normal um but yeah I want to know like why do you why do you ask do you put a lot of weight in that do you make a lot of bets off um the paddock paddock appearance um horses I'm assuming you think Maggie's the best that's why the name is mentioned
four might have a major pace advantage. Just curious for the paddock people to avoid. I think I mentioned Maggie because she's the person I've seen the most on TV. I'm I'm kind of the same way. I think I've seen Maggie the most. I haven't seen um many many others. Um, I remember at Equestricon, uh, Acacia was asked the question like, "What do you look for?" And her, and her answer was good. She she said uh, she looks for she looks for changes. Um, so, yeah. I'm looking at this race just as far as as far as doubles, but I'm a, I'm a little concerned that the four could just be the fucking one speed. I don't want to pay doubles into that horse. I mean, 11 and 6, maybe. Fairgrounds is about ten minutes out, and there's eight horses, so we'll be able to get a get a look at that. Both those first time starters broke slow. One and five. Uh, two and four are up there. Not what the plot expected. Uh, both the one and five are making up ground quickly, though. Um, three and seven chasing that first flight. Eleven super wide. Ten wide behind. Five has got run, but... In a in a bit of trouble there. That horse was certainly uh, I think they they were a little bit mint um, in this spot. Let's see. Seven is now kind of stalking. Eight looks like the eight has run, but in a trip. Five is now backing up. That was a disaster start to finish. They're gonna try to be a little bit patient on this one, but might be a little bit too much too late. Nine starting to rally a little bit. They need to have that horse closer to the pace. What the hell? One was obviously well meant, that slow start. Seven's gonna have to work for it. As two is like, you're gonna have to try to beat me. It's gonna be close. Seven, two, one, nine. Uh, 
All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Fairgrounds, uh, let's see. Both the one and the three are both two to one. Come on, fairgrounds. Got some green keywords on the one. Some projections. Turf, prep, prep, improve. Dual, slog. The six is up in class off a win. The seven is progressive. What's wrong with the seven? Five to one. This horse definitely needed the class drop. 100%. Kind of forcing it here. Um, <laughs> prefer the seven over the three. I mean, the three, it's not like the three's had a barn change. She's been with Sharp the whole time. She is getting the class change. But, I mean, this horse was, like, doing hardly any running. I mean, even here, this debut is okay, but in no finish. And that wasn't, that wasn't a very fast pace. Then she's been up close to a very slow early pace, and then a slow early pace. Looks like a dud. Let's open this first, sir. How good does a horse need to be? I don't know if that, if, I don't know if that horse is much either. Pretty, pretty slow works. Not the strongest work tab. We have we have a response from Vic. Okay. Update. Uh for those that are not following on Twitter, the question was uh, directed to Vic. Uh I don't understand the reasoning behind CZ Rocket, a horse that you stated was a vulnerable favorite, as the show parlay horse, especially when you love knee deep in snow. His response because he's a really nice horse that can run just okay and still finish third. Knee deep in stow, although, in my opinion, very live at the price, is more of a risky proposition. Okay. I'm struggling for words. All I know is if I ever do some shit, you guys, like, bring it. Like, read. Read to filth. I, let me read this again. <laughs> What's going on here? Because he's a really nice horse that can run just okay and still finish third. Although, Need Even Snow, although, in my opinion, very live at the price, is more risky proposition. You guys, this is, this is what's wild too, okay? We're talking about third. There's seven fucking horses.
to a horse that you love, which is two, three, four, the fifth choice on the morning line. It has early speed. I mean, even even from like the plot, if you're like, okay, it's a you know a risky proposition, it just means just has to not let one horse pass him. I'm even going to say not let two horses pass him. Because the four and the two might not even be able to keep up with the six. The five and the three. I mean, this is a gambling game, my dude. We're all they're all risky propositions. All right. We got it. We got a fairgrounds race on our hands. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see what happens here. And I guess yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it's three. If this is, this is it. I mean, the three should have the pace advantage. I think this horse is maybe a quitter, but we shall see. Oh, we got another reply. <laughs> we'll do it after the Fairgrounds race. I feel like that was like a game show that like just like we'll give you the answer after the commercial break. All right, let's watch this race and then and then we'll go back. We'll go back to Oakland. We'll get this response because he's gonna he's gonna mansplain it to me. So we're gonna we're gonna find out. Spoiler. Uh, one broke slow, four broke slow, seven also broke slow, same with six. Three got out in front, as the plot expected. One is rushing up. Gonna chase. We'll see if the three's a quitter. I think the three... I think I know why. Um, the eight is stalking wide, but kind of looks like that horse is already starting to lose ground. Two's moving up inside. There's the seven. I thought was a good price. Ooh. Uh, five already starting to lose ground. Three, no excuses. Seven starting to move. Come on, seven. Seven looks like he's got run. This horse is going to stop, so just keep trying. The eight's back in the game. The eight is back in the game. All right, let's see. Comes the three, holding on for dear life, but he's quitting, as always. Here comes the one. Seven, out of juice. Tried. Oh my god, the three needs to never race again. Shit ain't right. Um, alright. The one, three's gonna hold for second. That horse is gonna get bet too next time. Cause I finished second. Green keyboards came through high frost. We're going to go out in a little bit. We'll do one more race, and then we'll go outside, as long as it's not snowing. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> so you guys believe me that frost is down there. All right. And, good thing I have pants on. I'm wearing a dress, actually, so it's okay. All right, enough silliness. Uh, Oakland Park, race four. Um, before we get into it, let's get into the tweet. Let's get into the drama. Into the drama. All right, so this is the follow-up. Let me go back, just so we have full, full context. 
Okay. I don't, me, to Vic, I don't understand the reasoning behind CZ Rocket, a horse you stated was a vulnerable favorite, as the show parlay horse, especially when you love knee deep in snow. Vic's reply. Uh, first, because he's a really nice horse that can run just okay and still finish third. Knee deep in snow, although in my opinion, very live at the price, is a much more risky proposition. Then he replied, let me put it another way. If CZ Rocket was 8-1 to one in this spot, I'd say he's the best bet in the history of horse racing. If CZ Rocket was 8-1 to one in that race, he has three legs. End of story. CZ Rocket is 8-1. to one. You would not want that horse. You, that, something is wrong. If that horse is eight to one in this field, but let's let's move on. Let me put this another way: CZ Rocket was eight to one on the spot. I'd say the best bet in the history of horse racing. Agree to disagree. Since he's nine to five, in my opinion, he's a good bet against. Oh my god! Nothing about the race change except the price. It's not about picking the winner. It's making the correct bet. What is happening? What what is happening? I'm like straight molding right now. He is he going to delete this? I feel like he's going to he would delete this. Okay. Let's start over. <laughs> I want to try to keep it together. Let me put this another way. If CC Rocket was 8 to 1 in this spot, I'd say he's the best bet in the history of horse racing. Since he's 9 to 5, since he's 9 to 5, in my opinion, he's a good bet against. It's back up. Previous tweet. Because he's a really nice horse that can run just okay and still finish third. He said that about CZ Rocket. Then he said, since he's 9 to 5, he's a good bet against. But you're betting him. Nothing about the race changed except the price. It's not about picking the winner. It's making the correct bet. But that's like the inc incorrect bet. Since he's 9 to 5, in my opinion, he's a good bet against. Two sentences later, it's about making the correct bet. But you bet a horse that you just said, since he's 9 to 5, in my opinion, he's a good bet against. How these two things, how are these two things both true? Do I not understand? How things work? Is this me? Is this a me? I don't think this is a me. Dude. I wish POTUS Capper was here. Why does he have to run the country when we're horse racing? What is going on? Let me just... Let me just text and see if I can grab it. Okay, while we're waiting for that, we'll let that marinate a little bit. And we'll go to this race. Um, the four side town, currently seven to five, which is short, but this horse just, you know, looking at the plot might have a pace advantage. But, you know, like the three here, it's a circle. If the horse doesn't have finish, could get run down late, um, but does seem to have a little bit more of a pace advantage just because he's above the par line, like higher up on, uh, where did that go? Higher up above the par line versus this one. Way down here. 
So maybe a little bit more, but still, I'm not, I'm not crazy about seven to five. All right. I think that's, I think that's too short. Uh, let's consolidate. Let's go through. Uh, the one, so the one has speed. Oh, but it's cutting, that's route speed. Where's he on the plot? Yeah, this horse can't make the lead in here. No way. Nancy goes 2, 11, 4, 12. She's like, the 4 is a little sus. I agree, the 4 is a little sus. Um, 2 is getting major class relief. I could see it. Getting blinkers. Let's get more data. Need more samples. Mm. There was a little bit of speed in here. This, this horse just doesn't win. For seven to two, mm, that also seems short. That's that's the bottom line. All right, moving on. Uh, we got the three here. It's not bad. But up in class, a lot of layoff lines. It's 83, though. This 83, though. Okay. Do you want to make a case for a long shot? That's the case for the long shot. Because, okay, all right, all right. Now, granted, this was... Back in 2019, this horse has had a lot of layoffs, uh, but we've got some progressive form. Got a big old number, a B minus grade last time horses in a photo for place. Hmm. Okay. Maybe if you want to like him for third. All right, the four is a horse coming off the layoff that could have the controlling speed, could also lack finish. The layoff, this horse is just not good. So far, so far it's a stab fest. All right, uh, this guy looks kind of slow too. Does have an 80, two back of 76, slog. Five horse field, minimal change of running order with field space out of the way. Okay, this horse has moved forward. It's had 42 days since. Whoa, what's going on here, 21? I mean, those horses aren't going to look pretty. Even if you like the four, I mean, you could play four. Four, three, five. Okay, all right. We still got horses to go through. All right, six. What's wrong with the six? Seventeen. What is going on? That's another horse that you would want in there. Even if they're not, even if they're thinking that the, the barn isn't going to win with this horse today, but they're back in for a tag. Make a case for that horse. This horse ran an 85 last out. The fours only run an 83 as the highest speed figure. That's why it's crazy that this horse is such a short price. Yeah, there could be upside. Yes, he could have a pace advantage, but this horse, when it comes to speed, is on the is on the lower end. All right, where we leave off? Seven. A prep. Ooh. This horse has speed. Mm. 
Mm, this horse is probably going to be forwardly placed. Could also be a, a little bit on the slower side. Pretty slow. I don't understand why the eight is 20, why the three, the five, and even the six, which is pretty close, 16 versus 20, the same, but whatever. Slow. Just want to look at the plot real quick. Eight and nine. Yeah, there. Forget it. Okay. Ten. Ten. Ten's got a look. Ten's got a look. Nineteen to one. Uh, was on hold early. Th this barn has been has had so many long shot winners this meet that have all gone gate to wire. So if they send the ten today, I would not be surprised. I know he's sitting in quadrant four, but a lot of those other horses have also. The five looks good. Kind of looks a little. I mean. Good enough for this. Same with the six. Um, and this is a class drop, too. That was a that was a higher level. 94, 86, and now this is 87. 10, 10's okay. Mm -hmm. 10 to 1. <gasps> 10 to 1. Guys, we're getting a POTUS capper. Okay, let's keep going here. Two more. Uh, 11 is also fine. Lateral move, B minus last out, uh, moving to an outside post. That might actually help this horse. It was Because it was an inside stocking trip, might do better. Okay. One more. And we're doing this. One more horse. Oh, Jeremy Balin's favorite horse. Uh, a little bit off form. Has back numbers is going to be, uh, was Peter Miller last time, is Diodoro today. That horse, when that horse retires, he he deserves a, a good life. I mean, they all do, right? Can you guys hear everything okay? <laughs> Mr. President, thank you for, for making some time for me. I know you have a busy job running the country and everything, uh, at least running the horse racing country. But I'm, I had you have you been on Twitter? Uh, I have not been on Twitter. I am uh, kind of busy drinking Sanka and I have my one finger on a red button. Okay. So here's the thing. Okay. Where do I even begin on this? Okay. So this morning, um, I was listening to the, to the Oaklawn show, which I don't, I don't normally do, but I was like doing some other stuff and I had it on the background and I wanted to hear, uh, especially about eight and nine. Cause I wrote, I wrote up those races. So at around like the fourth race or so Vic was like, I have a horse that I love in the eighth. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let's, you know, I'm, I'm now I'm really curious to what's going on. So we get to the eighth race. And he starts with this like dramatic, I already like told this story, but so I'm trying to do it in like the, the quick version. So he does this like dramatic of like, here are my like, you know, playing horses. You look for this opportunity when like these three things line up and I can't remember the third one, but it was like, you have a vulnerable favorite um, and you have a horse that's going to get the right pace and whatever that third one was. So he does this like dramatic thing and he goes, and there's a horse that I like in here. I don't even like this horse. I love knee deep in snow. And he goes on and he explains why he likes the horse, which I don't disagree with like at all for all those points. Um, and then he mentions again 
CZ Rocket, who he thinks is vulnerable. Um, and then he does his picks and he has like knee deep in snow and he has uh, CZ Rocket is like second and then like, you know, whoever, third or fourth, whatever. Um, so at the after the ninth race, they do like, you know, they put up like the graphic and each of them picks like four four races to do like a show parlay, right? And so Vic has CZ Rocket as his pick in the in that eighth race. And so even Nancy goes, Hey, you have you have CZ Rocket in there, is that correct? And Vic goes, Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you know, whatever, whatever reason. So I so I sent I sent Vic a tweet, and the tweet said Goof on a roof. I don't understand the reasoning behind CZ Rocket, a horse that you stated was a vulnerable favorite, as the show parlay horse, especially when you love Knee Deep in Snow. So he responds. He responds, um, because he's a really nice horse that can run just okay and still finish third. Knee Deep in Snow, although in my opinion, a very in my opinion, very live at the price, is much more of a risky proposition. Okay? Okay. Ten minutes later, he replies again, and he says, let me put this another way. If CZ Rocket was 8-1 to one in this spot, I'd say he's the best bet in the history of horse racing. Since he's 9-5, to five, IMO, my opinion, he's a good bet against. Since he's 9-5, to five, in my opinion, he's a good bet against. Nothing about the race has changed except the price. It's not about picking the winner. It's making the correct bet. Where have we heard that before, <laughs> So, so, uh, so where, like, this is, okay. So since, even in two things, this is like where I'm like lost. Like, how can these two things be true? Since he's nine to five, in my opinion, he's a good bet against. Two sentences later, it's about making the correct bet. That's why I picked him as my show parlay horse. It's so close, too. It's just so close, but so far away. <laughs> so close. It's like you're leading the goof uh, on a roof to water, but he's not drinking. It's so close to being right. <laughs> so close, but so far away. So, they're addicted. They're addicted to to giving out shock, even when they justify the exact reason why not to. They're addicted to it. Yeah, and I mean, it just doesn't. It doesn't even make sense because, yeah, okay. If you like knee deep to in snow to win, let's say that horse wins, he still pays to show. He, he's going to pay more than the chalk to show, even if it's it's an eight horse. It's also an eight horse field. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, it's an eight horse field. So Yeah, I like I'm like leaving out a lot of details here. You've got a 38% chance that you're gonna have four to four to take. Right. Assuming all else is equal. Yeah, wow. I also think though, isn't he like one of those guys that's a big enough better that he actually consciously thinks of I don't want to give out necessarily like publicly what I'm actually thinking because oh. because in his mind it might actually impact the audience. Oh my god! I left out this detail too. He said he said I'm gonna make a big bet on this horse on the knee deep in snow in when he was doing race eight. And again, I'm gonna clarify. I don't think it's nefarious. I don't think he didn't give out that horse to like hurt his price but he literally he said i'm gonna make a big bet on this horse like i'm gonna make a bet but i'm not gonna tell you to make a bet on it right well right because i can't give out honestly i can't give that out in my official play as anything other than chuck yeah it's oh my god that's why i was like i gotta phone a friend yeah that's tough that's really tough and again, like, I mean, not to harp on it, but it gets back at what ITP's been pounding on for years. Yeah. And again, not always the right kind of bedside manner. Maybe we can disagree <laughs> on that. It's, it's you have the rationale, you give the right reasons why, and then you do the completely wrong thing anyway. Yeah. I, I, it, makes, it makes zero sense. It's like you have that strong opinion, commit to it across the board. It's the same thing as the guy that was showing, and we won't, we'll shall rename nameless. Um, who 
picked this kind of long shot, this live long shot, and left it out of his top four. Mm. Same idea. Well, what, how's that a live long shot if you're not picking it in your top four? Right. It's, well, I think I think in this case it was he picked it on one platform but not the other. Yeah, which I guess in some ways is like it's, it's just it's just a hedge versus you know kind of anything else. Yeah, yeah. But that's oh wow, gosh. <laughs> and here, I mean, here I thought maybe like it wasn't an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely weren't overreacting. Like it was absolutely worth pulling me out of that uh, that meeting with the national security advisors to oh, okay. uh, because that is an emergency. Yeah, I mean, at least it wasn't. You know, at least you weren't like about to cancel student debt. And I was like, oh hey, can you believe what happened today in horse racing? Like at least that's yeah, still exactly. on the table. Um, yeah. All right, so Oakland, they're coming into the stretch. The nine is getting tired. Horse Greedy with an amazing run for Robertino Diodoro. This horse from... Oh, here comes the two. Is the two going to rain on the parade? Oh, this is going to be heartbreaking. No. Horse Greedy holds barely over the two. The four. Big, big fade. Big fade. I, for, I didn't see who got third. In there. Uh, let me catch up on chat real quick. Uh, my favorite handicapping term I've learned from these streams is slog. That's a that's a classic favorite. Also, Jason Beam loves the slog. Uh, Mike Nuri, yes, I guess that's according to Maggie. Correct. Uh, the cobbler just got hammered from sixteen to one to four to one. Blasted them as a first. Oh, at Aqueduct. Okay. Uh, can't think of a horse. Can't think a horse is an overlay to win, but not to show. I don't know though. No, I think, I think that's right. That's that's correct. I mean, 100%. yeah. You know, I mean, I know we don't. I'm not one that's a big like advocate bet to show, but at Oakland Park, it does make sense because they do have that on track show bonus. That if you were a break even show better betting on your ADW, for me here in Illinois, if I was on track at Oakland Park making the exact same bets, I would all of a sudden become a. Uh, a winning, you know, I'd have, I'd be a winning player, like just instantly. So, I, I mean, I get it, I get it in, in, in that case, but, but yes, that is, that is absolutely correct. Can't think of horses and overlay to win, but not to show. Yes. Well, and especially when he just, when he said he was playing it to win, it'd be one thing if he formulated the analysis and said, with that said, I don't think the horse wins the race, but I think the horse hits the board. So I'm going to, you know, structure my wagers that way. That's not what he said. So. No, it was, yeah. it was the, it was the opposite. Yeah. It's like I feel uh, like the CZ Rocket is safer. Is safer, but but then but then your argument, your your whole analysis changes a little bit, right? You come into it, you don't say CZ Rocket is a vulnerable favorite. You go CZ Rocket is is a logical horse in this race. I'm gonna try to beat him. I think he's gonna run a good race. You know, I think he's going to hit the board, the most likely horse to hit the board in this race. I'm going to try to beat him on top with another horse. Right. Right. And then, and then uh, nobody's forcing you to pick race eight as your show parlay. Oh, it's only one race for the day? No, they do four. But there's nine races on the card. So even if you thought that he was, that he was vulnerable... You could oh, just yeah. not. Don't, don't vote us. It's a freaking parlay. Yeah. Yeah, just skip it, especially to avoid like any, just to avoid that very like pitfall and yeah. not having to explain yourself. Just don't use it. Right. Or if you're so like, if you're so gung ho that that's the horse that can't possibly miss, like miss the board, then make that known. It's a horse that can't possibly miss the board. I'm going, like you said, I'm going with another horse on top. This horse can't possibly miss the board. I just think he's an underlay to win. Right. Fine. Right. Yeah. Collect, sure. collect your two forty on track to show. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, or at that point, it's the third. Ooh, it's the third leg of the show parlay. So, you know, if you're doing well up to that point. 
you're letting it ride on a on a short price vulnerable favorite. This is why we can't have nice things. And this is why I can't relieve your student debt. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) I've been trying to relieve my student debt all day, and I've I've just made my account debt worse. So (laughs) So here we we are. Honestly, that's a a four-alarm fire emergency. Yeah. So by all means... I'm always available to come out of whatever I might be doing that is not as important as that. So anytime, <laughs> feel free to bug me with something as ludicrous as that. Okay. All right. Very good. I'll let you get back to the to the real things. Good luck and good racing. All right. Talk to you later. God bless, you know what? God bless you, Emily. God bless America. <laughs> Did you hear that chat? All right. As long as you didn't make me say it back. All right. There we go. Damn, dude. I feel like the next person I have to call is Jeremy Balin because he's going to lose his mind. Let's let's just do a tweet. I'm not going to call him. Oh, I got to do this first. All right, now let's try this again. Uh, anybody, anybody hit anything in that in that Oakland race? Or at Aqueduct, or Gulfstream, or whatever else you're. You're at. Uh, I was on the two at Oaklawn, exact at Oaklawn, almost. Okay. Okay. Who finished third? The 11? The Joe Sharp horse? All right. Uh, Fairgrounds race three. One minute. Oh, my. Speed capping. But luckily, there's only five horses. Zach was pretty good there. 48. Uh, okay. What do we have here? Uh, the four. Let's go to the plot. Ooh. Four is a big favorite and looks pretty strong on the plot. A couple C's as of late, but getting class relief. Shifting to the turf. Interesting. Interesting for a horse that's favored. I don't like that. I don't like that. Now the three is favored. That makes a little bit more sense. Why not this horse? Why not the two? They like just, they, the ride was no good last out. 77 here. It's about the same as this horse. No clue to what the numbers this horse is going to run on the grass. That horse seems okay to me. You have to be you have to be a little bit creative. And he has upside. Could run faster. She could run faster. A five to one. Who might end up being might end up being the longest shot on the board by the time it's all done. We shall see. Let's see what's up. We'll do um we'll do one more race at Oakland and then and then cut the stream for for today. That's good. I'm two hour mark. It's a lot longer than I thought I was gonna make it. 
And I'm kind of in agony, so. One more race. One more race at Oakland. Because this upcoming race at Oakland Park uh, looks like a good one. But fairgrounds first. I'm going to see what this two does. I think this two is going to win. <laughs> Has horse in the pocket? Has run. Just needs Needs a little bit of daylight. Still doesn't have it. Yeah, this is like the same the same trip that they gave this horse last time. Like maybe not keep this horse bottled up inside. Oh my god, this race is not good either. Three horses together on the wire. All right. Okay, Oakland Park. This is it. Uh, I'm going to kind of... Okay, so Diodoro's already won two races on the card. Is that correct? Won the first race, but that's seven. Won that race, but that horse. Could be alive again. If the 11 horse is five to one, I... Th there, there's some value there. Um, one, I mean, just from the plot, looks looks fine on the plot, right? Square, quadrant two, it's about the par line. Um, this horse ran pretty well last out. Uh, even though this was an eighth place finish, this is an eighth place finish that can get overlooked. A slog for everybody out there. Uh, broke slow, made a move against the flow. It was an open length chalk winner, and the field was spaced out behind. You can even see the move in the running line a little bit. Uh, but made that move against the flow. Let me see if there's the scroll over. It was fast, that opening half mile. So moved into that fast early pace, and that caused that horse to tire late, and then keeping in mind, uh, you know, the open length winner at the field spaced out, like the finishing position, you know, is what it is. Um, so uh, that horse has, that horse has a move forward. And then there's an improved key. Now there's a couple other horses that are coming out of that race. We'll start with the number five. Um, another horse that had trouble at the start. Okay. Rush. Kind of that same thing, moved into a fast early pace. We got the X flow, so no keep, key. Um, could see a move forward on that one, currently eight to one. Uh, the eight also uh, saved, had trouble, uh, put in tight on the far turn, backed up and was unable to recover. Um, ran a 71 right before that. So this horse could definitely improve, currently seven to one. A little bit cold on the board. Uh, seven to two morning one. And then there's this horse. Doesn't come out of that same key race, but uh, a little bit something to like. 
Let me see. Let me do this. Start over. Was warm, was wearing wraps, coming off the layoff. The pace setters finished one, two. Um, and then just, it's kind of a positive, okay? So this horse still lightly raced, right? That was a first start back um, in 260 days. So even though it was the three-year-old campaign, almost like a four-year-old. Um, but going back to last year, or yeah, I guess now we can say going back to last year, but that first part, um, was was in against tougher, was in against tougher than this race where the horse actually improved. Um, the layoff followed. It was also a muddy track. But that just kind of indicates that this horse is probably at the right... No. Was probably at the right level to compete. Uh, still heavily washed out there. Um, so they brought the horse back off the layoff at the right level that the horse could compete at. Um, and then maybe needed the race, was wearing front wraps that day. So we'll keep an eye on that. This horse is currently 10 to 1, so worth worth taking a little bit of time. But the other thing is coming off the layoff and then running running an improved speed figure, so running a new top speed figure off that layoff and then projecting a move forward. Um, so one, it's, you know, the horse running a new top, it, it is a positive, just kind of right off the bat shows some progression from those early sophomore races. And then if that is indeed a prep, there is a, there is a bit of a move forward there. Now, as far as these, as these other horses kind of in the field, um, three, for example, frost, stop it. Um, was running kind of the the higher 70s, 80s, but it's been a little bit, a little bit off form. But basically these horses, you know, kind of running relatively the same numbers. It wouldn't take maybe 10 points. But again, there's Falcon Heavy 77. Let me do this. Hmm. I'm just going to sort on speed figures. Um, the three kind of moves to the top, who's currently favored, so, you know, makes makes sense there. Um, but followed up with that is the five, nine to one, and that 11, nine to two. And then 10, who I think is the 10... Ten's currently seven to two. Yeah, that horse is that horse is I mean it's okay. It's fine. Sort of an outlier. Not great value at seven to two. It's just that that one. That one race. Um, so let me recap. The five has, has a look, eight to one. The eight, 11, one. Even the three current form, three has those back numbers, but the current form doesn't give doesn't give that horse any edge in here. What do you guys think in this race? Where's everybody at? Let me look at the three. Let me look at the three on the plot. It's good on the plot. But it is kind of getting flattered off that other form. Yeah, this horse is kind of going the wrong way. I thought at Indiana, maybe this day, 
I forget, but one of these two days at Indiana, I was like, this horse is going to, is this is the day, this is the day this horse is going to turn it around. Couldn't have been more wrong. Incredibly wrong. Yeah, they're they're gonna send. They're gonna send and just hope that this horse that this horse holds. But they're gonna have a big surprise with the number nine. Birds aren't real, so not a fan of the eleven. Oh, <gasps> falcon heavy. Yeah, but <sighs> it's a surveillance drone. Surveillance drone heavy is the code name. But good point. Not a fan of the 11. I hear you. Got front wraps on the two and the three. Is this normal? <gasps> First time front wraps on the three. Five looks good. First time front wraps on the two as well. Oh, five is sneaky. Uh, the seven is warm. That's something new. That horse doesn't, at least it isn't documented that that horse has been warm in the past. The eight's getting overlooked. Yeah. Off that last race. The eight's in front wraps, but the eight's always in front wraps. The nine definitely looks like a sprinter. So they're going to send. I mean, they're they're, not, they're stretching out in distance today, but that that nine is built like a sprinter. But they're still gonna send. Uh, the ten, that was the one that's a little bit too short of a price. It's now drifted to four. It's just okay. Has just that one figure. And the eleven has that. Oh, sorry. The eleven has that. The one A I missed. One A is all full of energy out there. Come on, horses. Let's see. I miss the I miss the picks. Let's see who Scott likes. Scott goes one, two. Oh, wait. That's not correct. Hold on. Scott's going to go 11, 5, 3. That's what I'm saying. Maybe not 3. Maybe a little 1. I like it.
Can one beat the 11? Because that's paying a lot better. Mm. Okay. Who's going to be around for, if I stream tomorrow, who's going to be online? Not everybody at once. Hands up. Yes. We got Santa Anita Park about to start. Yeah, so I'll write something up on the... Patreon, if you're not if you're not already, uh, subscribe on Patreon. If you have already, um, sub uh, a subscriber on Patreon, thank you so much. Um, the reason that these streams are happening is because you joined on Patreon. So thank you, and everybody here thanks you. Yes, hi, thank you. All right, good, 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 good. Um, so I'll write something. I'll write something up as far as the um. The pick six tomorrow again. I'm not gonna write. I'm not gonna write a ticket and do the like. Play this ticket, you know, or tickets or whatever. I'll write up, you know, some ideas of maybe how to approach, and then use that information. Plus, you guys are all good. You have excellent skills, uh, to blend uh with your own thoughts, your own budgets. Going to the gate. I wonder if the... No. I was going to say, is the 11 going to be favored by the time they go? No, the 3 is pretty, pretty strong favored in all those pools. So... And then stay on Twitter because we have this uh we have this Vic drama. Be interesting to see what uh happens. What's going on here? The Vic drama. I had some other noise a few minutes ago. You'd be posting to Patreon for today or tomorrow and tomorrow regarding San Anita. Yeah, so tomorrow tomorrow for the pick six carryover, um, I'll write I'll write something up for the for the pick six sequence. Um not for today. Today we'll just we'll just hopes and prayers that it holds for tomorrow. So there's that sprinter at nine out in front. Eleven on the creep. It's been creeping. Thanks. Rest up and get healthy. Thanks. It's this is not fun. My <laughs> if you're gonna get a rash. The face is probably, the face and the eye is probably the worst spot. And one in nine, here we go. So, yeah. It itches quite a bit. It's not pretty. 
Five just took the lead. The 11 is flattening out like a pancake. Three is plotty as hell. That sprinter the nine's trying to hold on, but the four, four could sneak into this mix. The five is gone. Eight's gonna maybe get third? No. Five, four, three, eight. Eleven's a bum. But one of those horses out of the key race, so that's cool. Uh all right. I think that's I think that's it. Thank you. I will try to try to rest up for tomorrow. Um check that out if you haven't already. Patreon.com slash left-handed turns um and that that supports these streams which is awesome um try to get hodas capper on for tomorrow um all right i think that is it thank you guys so much hopefully i didn't spaz out too much over the twitter twitter drums but as it happens all right thank you guys so much good luck good luck the rest of, of the way um circles and squares race eight race nine all right